Hi everyone, welcome to another video. This is part three in the Cobb SF intake series for the Mark 6 GTI. So this is the installation video. So the purpose of this video is not to give you the exact how-to, though I do go into some detail. Um, but the reason is, I guess, Cobb Tuning already does that quite well. There's a knowledge article online in their sort of knowledge repository. And I'll be sharing the link in the description uh, so you guys can check it out. So it tells you exactly what kind of tools you need and it has a step-by-step -step instructional on how to uninstall the airbox, the stock OEM airbox that you have in your Mark 6 GTI and how to install their Cobb Tuning SF intake uh, system. So, uh, and there's actual pictures where they show you the bolts and, and, and the various things that you need to sort of take off and the various parts and, and that sort of thing. The main aim of this video is just to give you a look and feel and walk you through and also share some tips and, and things that work for me because as we know, I guess instructions are one thing but in reality, you know, sometimes you can hit sort of roadblocks and, and hiccups and, and I definitely hit quite a few here. So I guess let's get into it. So first thing I guess you see me do is take off the engine cover. Uh, though you don't really need to, I just needed all the space I could get. I've got fairly large hands and throughout the video you'll see that I really struggled to get my hands into those very tight spaces around the engine, uh, particularly around where the turbo clamps are and the PC fee valve at the back. I do want to note that I also struggled because I recently moved houses and I have no idea where all of my tools are. Um, I suspect they're all the way at the back of the garage where there's just a pile of junk in front in front of it so I couldn't really get access to it. I only had a handful of tools to muck around with and that's why I sort of struggled. So first thing I guess you see me uh, take off the engine cover. I'm trying to I was trying to attack the um, the PCV valve with no luck. My hands are quite big. Uh, so I'll start trying to dismantle the other parts of the uh, airbox. I guess the first thing apart from the engine cover um, is the MAF sensor. You do definitely want to take that off and put it as far away as, as you possibly can. And you want to take extra care with the sensor and any of those components, especially once you take off the pipe, uh, just around the turbo, you want to make sure nothing falls in there. Uh, so once I've done that, I'm trying to sort of make it a bit easier for myself, um, loosening various parts of the intake pipe, just to give me access to the hose clamp that connects this pipe that I'm trying to pull on um, so that connects this pipe to the turbo and again this is uh, Mark 6 so it's this particular one's a 2011 model so th I mean the clamps have been sitting there for at least 9-10 years uh, so they're, they are almost bloody welded shut welded together very difficult you see on the back of my hoodie I've got grass all over myself I had to cut the video. What happened was a couple of times I kept dropping the um, the vice grips, uh, and that's what I'm using here. So if you've got long nose pliers or pliers specific to taking off hose clamps, that's ideal. But I had to work with what I had. I had the vice grips that are very awkward. Again, I've got very large hands, and also pliers that you see me uh, sort of use now. But they kept dropping in the engine, and I had to move the car and try to get under it and find where it is. It was stuck in the engine. Uh, between the manifold and something else and I just struggled to get it out but anyway um, again if you can get access to the right tools make sure you do that first because again it can be a struggle so I've finally taken off, off the pipe obviously and I've taken off the PCV valve from the pipe first and now I'm just struggling to take off the rubber tubing that connected the pipe to the turbo uh, inlet so now I'm sort of continuing to do that and wrestle with that for a little bit <coughs> And again, take care, take your time. I've sped up the video, of course, but I was really taking my time. Take your time with this because any wrong move, especially around the sensor or especially around dropping anything in the turbo, um, it can be pretty, I guess, catastrophic for the turbo and for the sensor, it'll be very expensive to, to replace. They are quite sensitive. Uh, so very expensive to replace, they are quite sensitive. So I've finally taken off the, the turbo um, turbo uh, silicon piping and I connect straight to the turbo and I'm just starting to take off um, the front part of the airbox now. 
so I guess I, I, I'll continue trying to do that. So the instructions tell you exactly what to do and where the, where the bolts are, where the screws are. So there's two screws that connect the front part of the airbox to the, the, the front part of the, uh, I guess, the, the body, the headlight area, um, just, just to the left of the right headlight. Uh, and there's rubber grommets, I believe there's three rubber grommets that hold the stock airbox down and also one torque screw. Um, I, I can't remember from the top of my head what torque screw that is, but it says it in the instructions, but it's, it's, it's a larger one than, than the other screws that screw the, the front part of the airbox. Uh, it's also, again, because my hands are quite large, I'm struggling to disconnect the pipe um, that connects the front part of the airbox to that back part of the larger airbox where the air filter sits, so that part right there. Uh, so now I guess it's the easy part, just make sure you don't get you know, any your hands caught on anything and rip anything because then it'll, it'll just be complicated. You don't want to rip any lines or any sort of other airlines or any PCV clips. And, and just a note, with the PCV clip that I took off originally, just take special care with that. You need to basically press in the two sides of the PCV clips from the PCV hose and pull it out and be very gentle with it because if it snaps, you have to replace that hose. So here I am now, I've removed the stock air box. There's this little sort of pipe that goes down. It connects nowhere, so don't worry about that. Uh, the math sensor housing needs to be removed and I'll do that in a minute. Uh, what I'm doing now is just removing the rest of uh, that front part of the, the air box. <coughs> Okay, here we go. So I've removed that part and I'm just showing you where the two screws. Now, keep those screws. I'm just trying to focus the camera here just to show you the, uh, the torque screw I'm using. Uh, again, you'll have the exact details in, in, in the knowledge articles in the description. Keep those torque, screw, torque screws, keep everything because you need to you reuse some of them. Um, those you won't need to reuse, the ones on the math sensor housing. Um, but definitely take care with that. I put it in a safe spot away from everything else so it doesn't stuff up uh, or nothing sort of breaks it all. But again, it's an expensive part. So now we're moving on to, so a bit of an interesting one here. So the instructions were a little bit unclear around. So first I misunderstood and thought you need to put a hose clamp, the hose clamp there. And I thought that's really odd. Why would you do that? Um, because the instructions did say use a number 40 single um, hose clamp and I couldn't find anything in there. I couldn't find anything that I don't know if the instructions a little bit were a little bit dated. Um, that's sort of the only one I struggled with instructions wise. Everything else was pretty clean, pretty good. Um, or either that the instructions were a bit dated or they just forgot to put in the hose clamp in there. So the one that you see on the battery box right now is one that I had in the garage. The only problem is it's too wide and that would have pinched on the hose if I put it on there. Um, so I decided to go with the zip tie. So later on in the video, you'll see I, I completely fixed that. I, uh, they supply a hose clamp on a breather valve that you'll notice in the instructions. Some Mark 6s come with an extra breather, uh, an extra uh, pipe that connects to, or air hose I should say, that connects to the front part of the air box. Mine's not uh, one of those. My engine doesn't have that, but there's some Mark 6s that do have that. And for those, the kit caters for both called the intake kit so they send you a breather valve you need to attach now because I don't have that breather valve I end up later on in the video you'll see I remove the uh, hose clamp they give up they give me with that breather valve which is quite slim and I end up putting it on that PCV adapter so right now what you see me doing is putting a hose a larger hose clamp and connecting that silicon pipe to the turbo so again take special care because you don't want anything to fall inside the turbo um, so now I'm connecting that, taking care of that PCV uh, pipe or PCV hose and fire out it's annoying because it's just, it's, it's there, it doesn't move the hell out of the way and again, you don't want to ruin it, so I'm, I'm taking special care with it. Um, again, having the right tools is very important because you notice I have a flat head trying to screw in uh, tight the hose clamps and then later on unscrewing them and screwing them and that sort of thing and it's not the right tool to use. I believe it should be an 8mm, um, an 8mm socket, 8mm socket, put on a ratchet and it's just much easier. Or if you have a flat head that's wider than the one that I had. I had a fairly small one, but again, I didn't have access to all my tools. I had to work with uh, with what I had. 
So now I guess you could see part of my back. There I am, I've fitted everything there. And I'm about to connect the PCV hose. I'm just making sure everything's snug. And just make sure that the clamps as well are sort of straight and not pinching anything and you're not sort of over tightening especially around um uh, around sort of plastic well you won't be putting it over plastic you'll be putting it over metal but you know what i mean just try not to overdo it over tighten it you want it to be snug but not nothing crazy so now i'm putting in the rest of the piping uh this part's again fairly easier now and i'm putting in the bolt that connects the pipe to uh, i guess the top part of the engine I struggled with this a lot because it's a 10 mil and I didn't have a swivel. Now, if you've got a swivel extension or swivel bit that you can connect to your ratchet, it will make a world of difference because again, I've got big hands or if you've got smaller hands, you'll be all right. But I've got big hands and I really struggled. I needed to use the 10 mil socket here with um, without a swivel and it was murder to do. Bloody hurt my back. Um, so yeah, having the right tool is very important. What else am I doing here? So I'm continuing to tighten this nightmare of a bolt. Uh, it does take me a little while. Uh, again, just taking care not to pinch anything, not to, you know, it's so easy to get carried away and just lean on the engine and that sort of thing like you see I'm doing here, but take special care because you don't want to sort of wreck anything or, uh, you know, I mean, you, you'd you hate for it to start off being just in, uninstalling the OEM intake and installing a new one and then end up being replacing a part or breaking the PCV valve or the PCV, or PCV hose or or something like that so just take special care um, uh, around those again you really don't have to and the instructions I believe from the top of my head do say um, you don't really have to well, I could be wrong but you don't really have to uh, take off the engine cover uh, because you're not going to be touching any of those components under the engine cover I just did because again I have big hands and I just needed all the room I could get So this thing's finally catching on and I'm tightening the bolt, done. Uh, again, tighten it, like make it reasonably tight, but don't overdo it. You see here I'm pointing out there's a 10 mil uh, bolt that you need to remove because there's a one of the brackets, so you get two brackets with the uh, intake system. One of the brackets needs to be mounted there and that's where your metal uh, enclosure or your airbox is, the, the cop tuning airbox is going to sit. So I've installed the bracket, I'm tightening it. Um, and then there's also another bracket, but that goes onto the air box itself, the bottom, and that will go onto uh, the screw to the left that you see on the left of the battery box. Um, so you can see sort of a thread there. So right now it's time to put in the uh, the, the flange, I guess, or the uh, the can't get the words out, uh, the air filter adapter. So the long part of the adapter goes outside the box and the sort of the fatter, wider part of the adapter stays inside the airbox. Again, the instructions detail that this, and, and they've got pictures and it tells you exactly what to do. Um, yeah, so you screw in the, the torque screws, or sorry, the hex screws, and you do get an Allen key in the kit, which is really good. But I mean, m most of us have, have Allen keys, but uh, for me, it was, uh, it was great that they did give me an Allen key because again my tools were I didn't know where half my tools are so that was that was good I would have struggled it saves me going down to the store uh, so tightening um, the bracket so you hook up the bracket that part's going to go on to where you took the OEM torque screw off So here you could see where I'm, where I, what I spoke about earlier was uh, I decided to rectify the mistake I made um, and that's uh, removing the zip tie. Now looking at the pictures, I don't, I mean, it didn't look like, this is the only part that's confusing that I find in the, in the, um, 
in the instructions, the only part, everything else was great. It doesn't even look like they put anything on there. So in the pictures, it doesn't look like, it looks like they just fit in the PCV adapter into the silicon hose and put nothing else there, no clamp. And I guess, it, I guess it is pretty snug, so it could stay like that, but I just wanted to reinforce it. So that's where I put on the, um, the, uh, the, the uh, hose clamp. Now it's time for the, so what I'm doing now, the map sensor, there's an arrow that points upwards. So you need to make sure that the, the arrow pointing upwards is pointing towards the turbo because that's the airflow. So it sucks in through the air, the air filter and then goes through the turbo, the arrow pointing up. And with the arrow pointing up, you need to put the short uh, silicon tubing that they give you. And the longer part with the angle goes at the bottom. So as you can see, I'm doing there. So sort of hand tighten a little bit. Well, you can tighten these ones quite tight because they won't move around anymore. Um, but the rest of the components, try to just sort of tighten them a little bit, but not over the top. You'll go back to them later and you can, once everything's fit in the way you want, you can sort them out. Put in the other hose clamp. And now it's time to fit your airbox. So I'm just showing you where, where the screws go and where they'll sort of be mounted. Okay, so tuck in the, the front of the airbox first and then put in the silicon hose because once you connect the silicon the hose to the uh the flange or the uh air filter adapter you won't be able to put in the air box it's it's difficult and i learned the hard way but i cut that part out uh, so tuck it in first and then start screwing things down loosely you tighten them later once you fit things in a bit better um, so right here I, I i move the camera down so those two torque screws that you took out from the front part of the air box uh, you just need to screw them back in. So they're, they're, the one on the right is, is fairly easy, the one on the left, and you'll probably see um, that there's not much room to move. So I tried to hand tighten as best as I can first, and then I started doing, again, if you've got a swivel, or if you've got a ratchet with a swivel, or if you've got a, um, uh, uh, I think an eight mil will take the torque head, a ratchet so you can get a like a ratchet with an 8 mil I think a 7 mil and then put in the torque attachment in there and then just use a ratchet that'll again I didn't have the tools so I, I struggled a lot with this one so now I'm putting in the larger torque screw uh, so this one came off the OEM airbox remember the rest were grommets so we're tightening that and the airbox is pretty much fitted so all that's left now is just basically connecting the last bit of hose um tightening everything putting on the map sensor putting on the air filter and then i guess doing the first sound test and the first sound test is going to be without uh without the cover first just to sort of see what the sounds like but i'll get to that in a minute so now i'm just uh i know my head's in the way but i, I guess you get the idea just putting in the last clamp So tighten them, screw them again. If you've got a ratchet socket set that could do those, it's, it's, uh, it's a lot easier. This flathead was rubbish because <laughs> it was quite small, small flathead. Okay, so I think we're almost done. Okay, whoop, tightening the last one. You can see it just keeps slipping and then I just sort of gave up and started using my hand to get most of it in there. but. Yeah, one thing I learned is um, I probably shouldn't have even started this job at all without having all my tools, but again, I, I couldn't get access to them. And to be honest, I didn't want to wait. I just wanted to do, I wanted to get on with, with installing the intake. I was really excited for this intake and it completes the mods I need for stage two tune. So I've put in the air filter quite easy same thing clamps already on there comes with the clamp and there's the airbox cover the cob airbox cover it looks it looks great uh, i love the look of it it's really well made but i'm not putting it on yet uh, and then basically onto the air test right now I'll connect the uh the sensor and when we're ready to go okay guys so now we're going to do a uh, sound test and i'm going to do it first with the airbox open
Okay everyone, so sound test now while we're in the cabin, in the car, with the airbox still open. So it's got a bit of a roar to it. You don't hear the um, the flutter or the, uh, the turbo whoosh sound like you do if you're outside the car with, I guess, the bonnet open. Um, but you, you do hear a nice roar. Now, also, just keep in mind, my car does have a uh, aftermarket dump pipe. Um, so that may also be add adding to that, to that sort of little bit of a growl. So just keep that in mind. Um, I did not do a before and after sound test. Part of it was, I totally forgot, that's the truth. I got carried away and started, uh, started recording and, and pulling apart the old airbox before I could turn it on and let you guys sort of hear what it sounds like. You could probably Google and listen to what a stock Mark VI sounds like, it's probably the best bet. Uh, even if I didn't get carried away and did think about uh, doing a before sound test, it still wouldn't be 100% because again, it's not stock. My car has, uh, I guess, one mod, but still, the, uh, the uh, the aftermarket dump pipe would add to the sound, so it's still not really a stock Mark VI. So I would just check online for stock Mark VI sound and then compare it that way. Okay, so now that we've done the first set of sound tests, so inside the cabin and outside of the cabin with uh, with the airbox cover off, now I'm going to continue the installation, uh, and that is just four simple torque screws to put the cover on. Very easy, very simple. Now they come with what I initially thought were rubber washers. So if you watch my unboxing video, I said they were rubber washers. They're actually plastic. Um, yeah, not sure why they went with plastic, but um, I guess it, it's fine. Just be very careful not to over tighten because you'll snap the plastic. So it is quite durable because it does, uh, I, I did tighten two of them quite, quite a bit and they did uh, indent or bend in the plastic so it didn't really snap but you just want to take care because you don't want them to snap um, not that it's a big deal I guess you can go to the shop so your local shop um, Bunnings Warehouse we have here in Australia but if anyone's watching outside Australia just your local hardware store and you can get plastic washers or rubber washers no big deal but here I'm just hand tightening them um, I did I do have a drill I do have access to a drill I know I said I didn't have all my tools and I don't but I do have access to a drill but I chose not to use it at all because a lot can go wrong with a drill you need to be very careful and hand tighten not over tighten okay everyone time for that sound test i fitted the cover of the airbox and now it's a closed system it's complete i'll do a sound test uh, outside so i'll leave the camera here and then uh, we'll go and do a sound test inside the cabin and see if there's a difference between uh inside cabin outside cabin of both closed and open systems Okay, so now we're inside again. So the cover's on, doors are closed, windows are up. The bonnet is open though. So um, just note that the bonnet is open. Um, so let's give it a rev. Okay, so the main difference um, I could hear is i guess it's more of a whooshing sound than the flutter so thanks everyone for watching the video i hope uh, some of you guys found value in it um, at least you know it helped you guys install the kit that you got or at least if you if you haven't bought it yet or you're not thinking of buying it at least you sort of got some insight into what's involved in taking off the stock airbox and what's involved in putting on um, an aftermarket one a lot of aftermarket ones are pretty similar anyway so you know the knowledge is transferable regardless of the intake 
um, overall. Now, I've, obviously, I've pointed the camera over to the boost gauge I have. I probably should have done a video on this before I installed it. Um, but if you guys are interested in uh, a video on, a, I guess, a walkthrough on what I did, what was involved, um, then I'm happy to do one like that. Again, it, it'll be after the fact because I've already installed it. Um, there is one thing, so it's not completely installed. I'm just waiting on a PCV adapter that gives me a, a, a vacuum line sort of nipple to connect to. So I haven't connected the vacuum line yet. I'll probably do a video, an installation video on that alone and then walk you guys through what I already did to install the electrical part of the boost gauge and obviously that vent uh, and where I got it from and, and that sort of thing. So if you guys are interested in that, I'm happy to... Uh, if there's an appetite for that, I'm, I'm happy to walk through that. So uh, thanks again for watching the video um, and hopefully I'll see you guys in the next one.